Let's take a look at this third limit. So here we have the limit x approaching infinity of the difference of two log functions, natural log at x plus 1 minus natural log of x. So both of these are going to infinity, right? So it is this infinity minus infinity form. We've got to figure out what the value of the limit is. Now, in this case, we benefit from a property of the natural log. Remember that the difference of two logs can be rewritten as a single log of a quotient, x plus 1 over x, okay? Now, from here, we could, we could proceed to kind of, you know, so the natural log function is continuous. So we're allowed to bring that limit inside and consider the limit as x goes to infinity of, of x plus 1 over x. And the solution in the textbook says, hey, that's, that's infinity over infinity. Let's use L'Hopital's rule. And yes, you can use L'Hopital's rule. But just because you can use L'Hopital's rule doesn't mean you must use L'Hopital's rule. Possibly a more reasonable approach for this one is to simplify the argument inside that log function and say, well, this is 1 plus 1 over x. And we all know what happens to 1 over x as x goes to infinity, right? As x, if x is going to infinity, 1 over x is going to go to 0. So this is approaching log of 1. Log of 1 is 0. Okay. So yes, it's an indeterminate form. No, you didn't actually need L'Hopital's rule to evaluate that limit. All right. That brings us to this last limit, x squared minus e to the x. Now, we can, we can kind of guess the answer here, right? Once you have some sort of intuition for, for relative behavior of different functions, and, and in particular understanding that exponential functions, they grow faster than any power function, right? Really any polynomial function. Um, both of these are going to infinity, but this is going to infinity a lot faster than that one is, right? So we expect that in this difference, this term is going to dominate that minus sign out front suggests that the answer for this is going to be minus infinity. Okay, but maybe that's not convincing. So what can you do? Well, what you can do is you can factor out the x squared and do x squared times 1 minus e to the x over x squared. Okay. And now we have a, a limit of a product, right? So we say, okay, can we do product of the limits? I mean, I mean, they're infinite, but sure. Um, what's going on over here? Well, we did, we did e to the x over x cubed in the previous video, right? And we saw that for e to the x over x cubed, that limit is, is infinite. And e to the x over x squared, still, it's still infinite, right? Um, by two applications of L'Hopital's rule, we'll get this down to e to the x over 2. x going to infinity. This is going to infinity. Minus sign out front says this part is going to minus infinity. Okay? So basically what we have is that this is, this is approaching infinity. This bit is approaching minus infinity. Okay? And actually there's no, there's no need to really do L'Hopital's rule or anything else here. I mean, we, we needed to understand this, right? But we, we did that in the previous problem, so let's not redo it. Um, infinity times infinity is not an indeterminate form, right? Infinity times infinity is, well, infinity. There's a minus sign in there. The whole thing is negative. So we're able to conclude in this case that the limit is minus infinity.